This is even better than last night. Wow. Yeah, that's, I just <laughs> thought the same, yeah. This is nice. You get a standing ovation before you've done anything. <laughs> it's never good because you have to wait what we say. And then maybe later. Well, Lisa Davidson and Michael Vole, you have done a marathon last night and you are here smiling and with us and I am thrilled to talk with you. So, Lisa, can we begin with you? Uh, you are from Norway. Your calendar is a dizzying abundance of challenging roles. After Die Meistersinger, you will return to the Metropolitan Opera, starring in two Strauss operas as Ariadne in Ariadne auf Naxos and as Chrysostomus in Electra. You are also Leonora in Beethoven's Fidelio in Florence and Ellen in Peter Grimes, well, Benjamin Britten. How do you pace yourself? Yeah, very good question. <laughs> Time will show. Uh, no, of course, um, this season is uh, maybe one of the, the tights I've had. Um, and maybe COVID have taught me that. Um, I feel even more grateful because uh, we've had a time where we couldn't do it and now I um, I enjoy it even more than I've ever done before. But um, of course there is a certain planning and uh, due to cancellations last year, uh, I will now have two things that I have not tried out with orchestra, which was the original plan to do Meister Singer with, uh, with Tony Papano in, in Rome uh, and then um, also uh, Electra in a concert version in Europe before returning to the Met. That did not happen. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but I mean, at the Metropolitan Opera, there's quite a lot of rehearsals and it's always helped and such a great team around. So I don't fear that particularly. And, uh, and vocally, there, these roles are not <laughs> like follows here where you have to we'll, have we'll get to like inches <laughs> in between you do an evening. This is um, Eva Chrysotomis. Um, are roles that don't demand that same vocal stamina as, for instance, Fidelio can do, Ellen is also Electra, maybe. in between, oh, and well, Electra, Christoph, I see but I mean, compared to the other roles. So um, I, um, I spend most of my time in the practice room, and, um, and with that, I hope my season will be a very good season. <laughs> But you have to soar above that large orchestra. That takes a great deal of stamina and focus and all of those good things, does it not? Yeah, that is true. But I do believe that that is what classical singing is all about. Uh, you can't force that. You can't, mm. you can't fake it through an orchestra uh, because they will win <laughs> no matter what you do. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so that's a that's a technical aspect, and some voices sound big up close and think, "Oh my, this is just unbelievable," and you can't hear them past third row. So it's about the the technical um, voice that you have and how you how you are trained. Uh, and every singer at the Metropolitan Opera have that kind of voice. Mm -hmm. It's just. Um, the sound of it, the quality are different and it suits different roles. Uh, but if you are cast and if you say yes to sing in, in operas like this, um, it shouldn't be something that you have to force to sort of reach further than the first row, but it, it, it should be uh, naturally in, in the technique that you've uh, practiced for years to get, I guess. Exactly. May I say one thing? You are wrong in one <laughs> sentence when she says... That's Each singer at the Met has the same, or what did you said in the, with, has the same voice? Yeah, no. That's not true because it she has an extraordinary, so. <laughs> outstanding, overwhelming voice. True, true, this true. Is really, I must Amen. say. True, true, true. That's so kind. Now, Michael. Let me see my point. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Hans Sachs is probably the longest male role in it the is. operatic repertoire. Well, probably it is. <laughs> no, okay. it is. It is. It is. In many, in many <laughs> different uh, aspects, yes. Right, so yes. stamina. Yes. <laughs> no, it is a question, and I must. I, I feel that um, each evening, every evening, each evening, uh, it's a question of experience. A beginner cannot sing Hans Sachs. A beginner mm -hmm. cannot sing a lot of different roles. And I don't know, 
nine nine years ago, 2012, I had my first sax, and well, I think it was quite well, but uh, it was after I don't know 25 years of uh, opera. Others have done it earlier and succeeded, of course. But for me, it was perfect this late because you have to know or to feel and to do it time time by time automatically this economic mm. way of singing where you feel where you can save energy because it's a really it's a tricky part you start and nearly have nothing in the first act two little speeches but that's not much and it seems to be easy then the second act no it's really it's not because pork is singing this wonderful tenor is singing all the time and um, <laughs> but then and then you come and it's it's okay. Then the first act is over. Then the second starts mm. and it's it's get, it's getting more and more. And it's very dangerous. I I remember when I did my first back measure, twenty years ago, um, this big scene with sax and back measure. It's really it's getting more and more. Uh, the heating goes up, and if you do not pay attention as a sax, you are not able to do the third act, which is mm. the act. Exactly. The, the Schusterstube is, is one hour and you sing nearly all the time. And then comes a little break, ten minutes, and then you have another two, well, not easy speeches. But now I, I and this is the gift of uh, each evening, also, yes, last night, you can enjoy it and you do, I do not have to think about it anymore. And this is really, I'm very grateful f for that because uh, if you come to the end and it went quite well, it's incredible, the feelings. Now, you come from a musical family, an artistic family. You have a, one brother who is um, an artist and one who, another brother who is a singer. So what was it like growing up in a family of artists? One of the special parts of this jigsaw in, of, of, of my career and my life, I grew up with music, a son of a minister in the southern part of Germany, where church music was part of daily life. Youngest of eight brothers and sisters, and... Music in the services in the community was done day by day, singing, brass band, whatever, and at home too. No Christmas evening without playing 20 trio sonatas and 45 chorals, mm. which <laughs> made me pretty um, uh, unquiet in the beginning. But now, it, lo looking back, it was the perfect start without knowing that I will end like now, uh, like uh, our days. It was wonderful. And uh, you also did a lot of Mozart roles, as I understand it, Papageno and Guglielmo and uh, Don Giovanni. All of it, and I miss it so much. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. And Eastern, um, I'm very close connected to the um, Staatsoper Berlin and Daniel Barnboim. It's so somehow my home company, and I live also in Berlin. And he does, just began this season a new Da Ponte. Mm -hmm. cycle and on Easter time we will have a new Don Giovanni and let's see and I'm looking really forward because this is part of our business sometimes the people who are in charge they um, judge you and then they say well if you do Strauss and Wagner and Verdi and Puccini you cannot sing Mozart anymore which is <laughs> not true. <laughs> not true. Thank you very much. Oh, well, I hope so. Diplomatically said. Well, Don Giovanni lies pretty high. I'm in the drinking song. You know, it goes into tenor territory, right? Oh, come on. <laughs> Piece of cake. Piece of cake. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, this, is a, this is also a thing. This is, Mozart is difficult music and also yes. to sing, but it's... For me, it's only pleasure and joy, and, and uh, let's see what happens. Great. Um, uh, the role of Ava is dramatically quite challenging, in addition to vocally challenging, because she has a somewhat ambiguous relationship with Hans Sachs. Um, how do you interpret her character? Well, we talked a lot about this um, when we worked on this. I mean, she we meet her in this because it's it's done in the in the original of what's what sort of Wagner had in mind. Uh, we're, we're close to that, and maybe she's at the age of fourteen, fifteen, and some some members of the opera came and was like, yeah, how is it to play a, a prize? How is it to be a prize? Mm. Trophy wife. A trophy right? wife, was, <laughs> and I was like, well, I I don't agree. I don't agree with that because. In the time, uh, and if we look at it as if it was a trophy wife, of course it would be wrong. But this is an opportunity, and I don't believe that Progner 
or Eva's father would ever give her away to someone that she doesn't want to be with. I, I see it as much more of an opportunity to say, okay, Eva, you have reached a time in your life where, first of all, I can't take care of you forever. Someone else needs to do that. We are in a time where Eva can't just get a job. <laughs> she needs someone. Um, and then what's the best way? We get someone to actually sing and, and compete for you. So you can almost turn around and say that they are the one who sort of do their best to, to get Eva. But I mean, I think that's the sort of the, the biggest misinterpretation of this because she is 14, she should soon get married, she'll find someone that she loves and this sucks relationship, I find um, the second act as, as well mm -hmm. as the third act meeting, but maybe in the second act it's like she realised what that is. Sucks has always been there, mm -hmm. always outside of the door. That's like her second uh, trust, a person that she can go to, a person she can relate to. And then she realized that, oh, of course, it could also be him. He, he sees it because he's a grown-up. She's 14, and she's like, wait, your life is just amazing, isn't it? And then, oh, that, that's, he, he has done everything for her. He's always been there and he's always been supportive and now he, he will be supporting her towards choosing another man too. Of course, Walter is much more suitable for her and for her life and for her, her age. Um, but I think it's, it's quite natural and quite um, normal so to so be in the time we're in and not... A, She's not a, a trophy wife that it's, it's thrown away from, from the old guy to the young guy. I think it's much more complicated and interesting than that. And she also gets angry with... <laughs> she also gets angry with Socks in, in Act 2, right? When he is uh, sort of deprecating to Walter. She, she, yeah, she course, shows her he spine, right? But he's deliberately provoking her towards saying, well, I ain't going to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's where... But she does the same. She goes to him and says... Can you please let me know anything about Walter? How did it go? What did he do? How, what did it look like? Can he be... I mean, she is not kind, uh, mm -hmm. but she doesn't really know at the time and she don't know where to go to get that information. She can't ask her dad. So the only way is to sneak out some information from him. And then he gets mad, I get mad. And yeah. I think that's just the perfect... That's how close they are mm -hmm. because they provoke each other as a couple do. I mean, there's no one I can provoke more then that's who are closest to me. Exactly. <laughs> and I feel Eva does that exactly in two of those things. Yes, and Michael, for, from your standpoint, the second act uh, duet with uh, Eva. Um, well, it's it's complex, all... right? Yes, complex. And no, this is also a, a, a turning point because in this duet, Sachs realizes, uh, that's my interpretation, but I think it's very obvious, that how this situation is, because in the beginning, and when she comes, it's like all the time. And of course, like Lisa said, um, they are very, very close. And we can talk about how old he sucks. He says, I had a wife and children genug. I had a wife and children. In that time, you married early, you got children very early. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm, I don't know, 30, 40 or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also convinced that if Walter hasn't appeared, maybe yeah, yeah. we have been married and have children and everything. And this is not only a, a business thing between a master and the daughter of another master, master, but uh, it's really love. It's really a very close connection. And therefore, it's in, in this duet, I start to realize what is really happening. And therefore, this ending of the duet I love always, because Eva must really get, she has to break out, and this is, well... I'm always afraid that this heavy shoe maybe could hit me when Lisa does it and <laughs> throw it on the back. No, no. In, in, in Bayreuth, the last performance we had, uh, uh, our, my Eva had to, uh, with a scarf, she had to beat me. And that was, oh, I loved it. It was funny. <laughs> Not because, no, 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 no. Moment, moment. Scenic. From a scenic It's a scarf, aspect. remember. <laughs> and, um, no, this is really one, also one aspect of this incredible 
challenge also of the playing a sax. The one thing is singing, and the other thing which I like so much is trying to get into these different aspects of his character. Mm. And he's not only the wise man, he's not only the cheating guy, what he does with Beckmesser, because he knows how it will end. And he's the loving guy and he's the jealous guy, especially in the, in the third act after, before this incredible line of Lise, oh, sucks my friend. He get, he, he, I'm looking forward to throw all the things and show what, what's about my, my inner situation. Because this is the last moment, I think, before this paradise quintet, yes. uh, where, mm. where I, for the last time, I, I can react and show my disappointment or my sadness about how everything went. But after that, it's done. Like he says, my kind von Tristan und Isolde, can ich ein Traurigstück. It's incredible. Huh? That Wagner choose two bars. It's unbelievable. Oh, I love that. Let's talk about that quintet, because that is, in a way, the quintessential moment uh, in the opera where each of you, in a very Mozartian way, mm -hmm. is expressing his and her own thoughts. Um, Lisa, let's start with you in the quintet. Yeah, no, it, it, it's absolutely, of course, terrifying to sing that beginning. But it's... Um, it sums up so much of her emotions, and, and I feel that... Um, it, could, it could be personal too that you, you grow. Sometimes you realize how much you've learned within a time or in a relationship or, or getting to know someone. You you look back and you think, oh, I understand it now. It took me some time, but but this is where I am. And um, I feel this this place Eva is in with with Sax with Walter, her two best friends, is a very um, vulnerable moment but also a very uh, connected with them as you say we, we all have our own minds but it feels very uh, family like or, or supported and, and, and it feels like that on stage too with with these guys who've done it so many times and know it so well I, 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 I feel that support both professionally and, and privately in a way and Eva has grown throughout the opera, has mm. she not? Absolutely, more than any of the other characters, mm -hmm. I'd mm -hmm. say, because, as as you said, Michal, it's it's this. Uh, you get to see these emotions. You get to see that they get angry and mm -hmm. and mad and upset, and and in that, you get to know them better, and you see that well, he is mad because he actually loves Eva, mm -hmm. and then she she can't move on, and until she's told him, well, you're not wrong. Uh, and, and I think it, it is, that's why this, this comedy is, is fun, because, because you also have that. And Eva is not, not the comedy role. Her, her no. part is to, <laughs> is to do the, these other things and to, to sort of show that this, this teenager and this uh, very light and, and young girl uh, uh, can learn and develop and experience so much with with the people uh, around us, but I, I don't think you have to be 14 to, to feel that way there. Well, you've kind of gone from being a girl in the beginning to becoming a woman in this quintet. Absolutely, yeah. That is, the, that is where she's a woman and where she realized that, that it's, uh, it's different from now on. And Michael, you have said to Beckmesser in Act One when he says, well, you really want to marry Eva, uh, you have said, well, I'm too old and so are you, which he doesn't exactly appreciate. What is age? What is old? What being old? But it's another question. But, but at this point, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a certain amount of regret at having to lose Eva. Of course, of course. But, uh, and it's such a heavenly music. It's unbelievable. It's, um, and one word to the, to the part of, of Eva in this beginning. I really, I must admit, I saw and heard some wonderful colleagues, but cracking, in, also in this quintet. And it's because it's a so difficult role, Eva. Mm. It is not huge, the part. Yeah. But it has an incredible range of uh, vocal skills. Mm -hmm. Sachs, mein Freund, for example, in the, before the, the um, quintet is pretty heavy. You must really be very focused. And then you have to start, as Lisa said, and you had no nothing that it's a, it's something difficult for you it's unbelievable how you started and it's and i, I can't wait for this moment 
especially also together with Tony Papano, I must really say, which is my hero, what he does with, his, mm. with the music, with the orchestra, and not the first time for me, I'm very, very lucky. And then starting that, and then joining her, and then coming together soon with Walter, and then also David Magdalena, it's, it's really, it's paradise, and wow, this, I'm very, I'm waiting for Thursday. And uh, then, of course, at the very end, you have to kind of smack down Walter when he's about to give away the prize. Uh, this is what, it, it, it was very funny when I, when I, when I came um, and joined the, the group and we did the third act and this last, Verachtet mir die Meister nicht, Paula, um, the assistant stage director, say, uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, the production, uh, was this Paula? Assistant uh, stage director. Stage director. He said, why are you this angry? Try to find another way like Otto Schenk wanted. Mm. Because you can do it in the different ways. You can be very angry and say, how can you dare? <laughs> to reject this honor mm -hmm. and, the, and the master chain and whatever, and, or you can be very, um, uh, s s not scared, but you take care of, uh, to tell him how worth mm -hmm. it is and how mm -hmm. precious it is being, mm -hmm. not being part of this guilt, but, but what, you, what you have. And I try, and this is also wonderful, even after 40, 50 performances, to find another or again an aspect and which this is, last speech yeah. is, for me, easier than this, the first one after the Wach auf Chor, this mm -hmm. Euch macht es leicht. Mm -hmm. It is, Wagner is really a, he's a, also was what, what he does with the Beckmesser, for example. I know it, because I did it quite often in the, in the last, in the third act. He has to sing and to talk and to, all the time. And then in the very end, he has to put a high A. <laughs> and, well, you can... You can interpret it in, in, in different ways, also like a shout or a cry or whatever. But, well, Wagner knew how to tease or how to do okay. challenges to singers, I tell you. So you play the good guy and the bad guy. Yes, but, well, <laughs> Sachs is not only a good guy. Yeah. And Beckmesser, well, he's, he's not a foolish guy. He, he loses control. He won in the, in the first act, but then he acts on a certain terrain which is not his one. Mm. So you see much more three-dimensional role to Beckmesser than is usually... It's much in more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, and it, it, was, it is very interesting. Till the 70s of last century, the Beckmesser was only a, not a buffo role, mm. but a very uh, not quite well sung. And I think Herman Bray was the, one of the first mm. guys, colleagues, who started to sing it. Mm -hmm. And it must be a real opponent to Stolzing and he has a lot to sing and it's difficult of course it's a, it's a very special thing which is great and a great part of this comedy like what he does in the third act and especially if you have a colleague like Martin Krenzle um, he steals the show all, each evening mm. it's terrible I tell you <laughs> but um, I love him and I, I really I appreciate and I'm waiting for what, what does he do how will he stumble what is he it's incredible what he, what, what he does. Um, but this is, I'm very happy about that, that mm. the Beckmesser is not only a, a, a foolish Exactly, guy. yes, indeed. And, and what conclusion did you come to at the end when he tells Walter that uh, you, you really should not um, disparage the honor that is being bestowed on you? Well, it's, it's timeless. And I think this is, I don't know in which direction music develops also opera, but you never um, can create something new without the thing, the heritage we have. Mm -hmm. Nobody, no Beethoven could compose a Fidelio without the Baroque, without Bach, or, and, and so on. And um, of course, we have to move on in which direction, I don't know. I did a lot of contemporary music, and I, in, I do not know where we, we go to. We will talk about that in a bit. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, this is the thing to Walter... Be aware of what you are able to do, but be aware uh, what you have to respect and what you have to use and what you have to think about and whatever. And, and Hans Ox is kind of caught on the horns of a dilemma here because he um, is too progressive in a way for the, the Meistersinger, Meistersingers, the Zingern, I should say, um, but he recognizes the brilliance of Walter, even though it doesn't follow the rules. You think this is maybe autobiographical? Huh. <laughs> well, 
in short words, we all know that Wagner was, as a human being, very difficult. Let's say very diplomatic. <laughs> no, because it's really, he, he oh, incredible. But I'm totally convinced that the Hans Sachs is a projection, how he wanted to be, too. And um, of course, he was, I mean, imagine an opera world without Wagner, impossible. And he created something unique, and, and uh, he's a genius is the wrong word, wrong word a universe, a, a, something incredible. Um, yes, it's very autobiographic, I think so, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, but and the future of art and the fact that one must not necessarily follow the letter of the law. Maybe he, like all the others, didn't think about uh, what he is or which position it will be in the, in the future because he had to do. Mm -hmm. He had to do that. It, it, it was, he couldn't do it different, mm -hmm. like Bach, like Mozart, Schubert, every, everybody. Yep, yep, yep. Let us talk about other Wagner roles that you have sung, are planning to sing. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have done uh, Elisabeth in Tannhäuser and uh, Sieglinde, and I've also done Isabella in Das Liebesverbot. Yeah. Oh. Um, and of course, the, it's weird because I call them the smaller roles, like Freya, Dritte Nonne, Valkyrie, and they're not necessarily small, but when you put them in comparison to Elisabeth and Sieglinde, they are small. <laughs> Um, so yeah, those are the roles I have done. But it's so interesting because Wagner's music is also very lyrical. It's not just big. It's also lyrical. Absolutely. And I think um, I, uh, in 2019 was my first year in, in Bayreuth. And um, I remember from, the, from bef before that, people, people who knew Wagner said, yeah, it's, it's uh, chamber music. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and also it's all you... wrong. Because I hadn't heard it done properly. Mm -hmm. And that's not uh, disrespect for anyone I had heard, but first of all, I hadn't heard much, obviously. But it has to be done really, really carefully. And in Bayreuth, with the pit and everything, you hear how how chamber music it can be and how lyrical, as you say, it is and, and how light it can be. And of course, it then has the full-on, which we love. Um, but yeah, it, it can be very, very light and it doesn't demand this... This is always the, the big dramatic voice constantly. And it, it's interesting also when you see the age of some of the singers who premiered Wagner operas, they were quite young. Yeah, and I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend people to do <laughs> roles. <laughs> A 14 year old. It, it, it depends <laughs> on, on, on where you begin. Uh, but I think um, with, with my voice and with my career, I, um, I, I have to say that it, is, it's, it, it suits my voice better to do some of these things than to, to squeeze it into other roles that would be more right uh, if you look at the, the book of how to sing <laughs> uh, and then sort of in terms of age um, but I believe in my pace of it and, and, and the right timing you, you can't really know but planning ahead um, I don't know how many times I've been asked to do Isolde but it won't happen mm. yet so well, wait, wait with that. <laughs> now, Michael, you have sung several different productions of this opera. How does this one, which is quite traditional, compare with some of the other productions you've done? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't. I said last night. We said um, before the, uh, the start of Act Two, in the back stairs up and then to the left. And I think you you mentioned or, or Georg Zeppenfeld, the wonderful Pogner. Let's see how long or whether we can see again a production like that. I don't think so. Because, I d what was it, mid-80s uh, mid or something? The, 92. The 92. Three, maybe, yeah. 92. Or three. Premier okay, it's old-fashioned. I don't care about this expression, and it's wonderful. Yes. But if you sing, as long as a production, a staging doesn't disturb you, the focus is, of course, on the singing and the acting somehow, but... The rest is uh, forgettable because uh, you have to concentrate on that. You must decide in the beginning whether you want to do a production or not. And if, it, if you don't like it and if it infects your, the way you sing, and, and I believe in that if you don't feel well, it infects in a negative way your ability to, to sing, then you have to leave. And, um, but therefore, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I wait. And it's, I was uh, seven years ago when I jumped in. 
for the HD of the Meister Singer in December, I remember I was really shocked, oh, not nearly shocked, uh, not shocked, but uh, uh, it was impressive when the curtain rises for the second act and mm -hmm. the people start to applause because yeah. it's so wonderful. Yes. That's the same yeah. was with an Otto Schenk production at my debut and with Arabella in the second act. The curtain rises and there are these stairs and the big um, Kronleuchter and mm -hmm. whoa, and everybody goes mad. Mm -hmm. That's great, wonderful, because opera is also something visual and that's great. But then it's music, and for us, it's, or for me, it's singing, and, and it's okay. So you haven't had one of the minimalist productions where there's a chair on the stage, and you're asked to stand I on had, your head. I but not with <laughs> Meister Singer. Ah. But let's see whether it's, it's, it will work. I don't know. Well, so let's talk about one of those unusual productions, a minimalist production, shall we say. It was um, Hans Werner Henze, the Basser Reed, ah, Basser sure. Reden in Munich, mm -hmm. with Christoph Loy, a wonderful, really incredible German stage director. And it was nearly as hard as a Hans Sachs in total, sitting there, for example, 20 minutes with the back to, to the audience at the beginning of the opera, moveless and with, but full of tension, for example. 20 minutes, try it. It's long. <laughs> and, then, and then the rest, one and a, or two hours or something, old ancient Greek tragedy, and it was, it's a wonderful opera, and it's, the demands are cr huge, and because you cannot hide behind nothing, no uh, big costume changes, no action, well, a little bit, but, uh, and this is okay, because then you have to be very focused, and uh, wow, I, I love that, because, I mean, standing around and do nothing, then we do not need to rehearse six weeks, and uh, then, we can, then we can do a concert version, mm -hmm. and uh, if you are angry, you lift your left arm, and if you are sad, you lift your right arm, or something. Ah. Okay, why not? But then I save my time and stay at home. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what contemporary music have you sung, I should ask? Oh, not much. I've just done uh, some songs, uh, actually. Recorded some. Uh, but uh, of opera, I haven't done much contemporary music yet. No. Ah, do you plan to? Well, time will show. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatic answer. Um, Michael, how about you? I did a lot. I was a member of... Um, of a vocal group, um, I was a co-founder 30 years ago, which only did contemporary music. Mm. Sometimes huge work for one performance, and then it was gone and was never done again. <laughs> which I, I must admit that uh, I have problems with listening to these works, to these sometimes, because I must be touched. I must be directly moved by music. Sometimes it happens, but doing it, singing it, it's totally different. Um, and I'm happy that I've done it because it's, it was an incredible training also mm. for, for the memories, also doing an opera uh, by heart and uh, without any um, uh, help from the music because you had to do it on your own and I'm not, how do you say, if you um, absolute... Perfect career. pitch. Perfect pitch, I do mm -hmm. not have it. This is terrible uh, because then, okay. Um, and of course, if you do, a, a, I did quite often Lulu and um, Wozzeck, and, uh, but these are not contemporary music. These are classics of the so-called modern, more modern uh, part. I will do in a, three, in a few years uh, Aribert Reimann, the Lear, mm -hmm. which must be an incredible opera. But this is also not this kind of contemporary music. And as I said before, it must be done. And, and as far as vocal writing by contemporary composers, oh. um, there, well, there's Benjamin Britten, right, who wrote for Peter no, Paris. This is, an, this is Not, a classical. Oh, sure, and, sure. Uh, Benjamin Britten is, is oh, incredible. Peter mm -hmm. Grimes and, and Billy right. Budd and, yeah, and War Ray Grimm and whatever. But mm -hmm. this is... Not traditional, but wonderful. This is yes. romantic. Well, yeah. I'm trying to bring up contemporary composers who wrote well for the voice. Of course, of <laughs> course. But you know, this is so... sometimes insane. If you do a contemporary piece and it's too easy to sing or to play, then the critics come and say, oh, oh no, that's, uh, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, this is their impression, expression. But if you have to fulfill some, some regular, then we are like Beckmesser and the Meistersinger. Then it's, it's, it's stiff and then it cannot develop. And everybody has to choose what is good and what not. And I, as an artist, I can choose what I will do or will not. I did it really very long, a long time, and I'm grateful. But now I do 
the things I want and I love. So and this is not contemporary music. Sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so coming up for you, what is what is happening life after my Singer? Oh, coming back home. That is good. Mm. First. And I'm very happy that I have some projects in Berlin this year. So that means work at home, not being away, which is hard. This is a high price we have to pay, especially if you have family. And, uh, and you have children. I have children, two younger and two elder ones, and uh, that's good. And uh, I will do Samson and Dalila at the Berlin Staatsoper in December. Mm. And then we start a new ring in Berlin. Wow, that's an... Botans. Of course, yes. Yeah. With um, Dimitri Czerniakov, this will be hard work, I think. But then in New Don Giovanni and uh, concerts and Vepre uh, Sicilian and also other stuff. Mm -hmm. This is fine. I love Wagner and Strauss, but I also like the Italian Mozart. Tosca, for example. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. Which, with my wife, I look forward to be stabbed by my wife. That's very good. And, um, Scarpia, different. Mm, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes Beckmesser look like, uh, <laughs> oh, that's like an far angel. Away from Come on. <laughs> In terms of uh, uh, villains, right? Beckmesser no, is no villain. I know. You said. I, I will Scarpia remember that. <laughs> Lisa, you had mentioned um, the, the hiatus that happened for so many of us during the COVID year of uh, 2020. What was that like for you? Um, I guess like for so many of us, it was um, difficult and uh, challenging and in the beginning very scary. Um, I, I think especially um, like thinking of my family and, and before we knew that if we did the right things, we, we could get through this. Um, but yeah, I, I moved to Norway right after my Met debut here in, in uh, 19. Uh, so when I turned back from London... Uh, in, in lockdown, I came to an apartment that had one bed, one sofa, and a lot of boxes. So I had a lot to do in the beginning. <laughs> I could pack out and f find my, my life again. But, I mean, looking back, I, I, was, I was lucky to do quite a lot. The MedStars Live, uh, a lot of live streams, and even though I've done six or seven um, traveling quarantines, that was because I got to sing, and, and that's what kept me going. Um, mm. I got to spend a lot of time with my family, and, and that was absolutely brilliant. But they know, and I know, that I work best if I can sing, at least in between that family time. <laughs> <laughs> and now there was a documentary that was made of you, am I right? But it's only in Norwegian. When, Unfortunately, I will when, let you know when they text I was going to say, I'm when sorry. can we expect a, a <laughs> subtitles at least? It will, it will come, I'm quite sure they're, they're trying to do that. But it's, it's made by the, the Norwegian broadcasters, and... You know how it is, then they keep it close until they sell it and all that business. But I will, I will um, let let people know as soon as that it's with and subtitles. How is musical life in Norway? Well, I have um, I've studied for four years before I went abroad, and then I, I was there for for ten years. I have done a lot of concerts in Norway um, and uh, two operas, but mostly I, I live um, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and, and I feel very lucky to do that because I get to sing with great people and learn from, from the best. And then from time to time I can go home and bring some of my colleagues and, and also sing at the Norwegian Opera. I like that. Beautiful house. And Michael, what was the COVID year like for you? The beginning was really difficult because I had health problems. Not because of COVID. I was, <laughs> I was in, in, in Milano and La Scala doing a new Salome and one week before the opening... Uh, it happened. Uh, Lombardy was a one uh, hot spot, and but we, I got home, and um, but it was fine. But I was reduced from hundred percent to zero, and I did that for years somehow, and I got headache and mm. dizzy and whatever for a few days. It was really terrible, to, uh, not terrible. I mean, compared to other things, but um, and now looking back, I'm very grateful for that because reducing the speed of life. And I hope and I, well, I planned it somehow to reduce also the other things and spend more time, I don't know, in my garden with my loves, of course. And um, of course, this is the one side. The other side is the economic thing. If you are freelanced, you have to earn money. Mm. You are responsible. My wife is a singer too, but in the beginnings of her career. And so we have to look for, we have an nanny, we have a house, we have... Uh, daily expenses and whatever. And of course, I want to sing. So you must find the right way. Um, 
but the focus changed somehow during this year. And what I really, f I did, I was also lucky because I belong to a group, this is part of the business, when something was done during the last months, they hired so-called more well-known singers for streamings for, uh, of course, also the Met uh, Tone Gala or also one, I did all, one concert in May, which was transmitted in Wiesbaden with Christine Gerke, Schager and Elsa van Hever. Mm. Um, but, and I want to sing, of course, this is part of my life. But these last months showed that, um, well, it can be different and um, how precious also life is, mm. and uh, mm. especially also family. And, and this brought absolutely new dimensions to my relationship to my wife and to us as a family. And therefore, it was as hard as never before coming to New York and being away after 18 months together, mm -hmm. suddenly for these long period away from them. It's terrible. Of course, we have FaceTime and uh, WhatsApp and whatever, and I see them 20 times a day and talking, but that's not the same as being together and hugging and caressing and talking and laughing and crying together, and this is it's a difference. Let's see what happens. Well, speaking of which, both of you are New York visitors, and I'm just interested in your impressions of the city. <laughs> oh, I love New York. I do. Today I'm going to see the see the right answer. <laughs> and today I'm going to see the parade because I'm lucky to stay uh, due to all this uh, late planning at Visa. I I couldn't find one place to stay. I had two different. So I'm staying down in Bleecker Street, which means I get to see the parade and be oh. in the parade. <laughs> this is where I live in that oh, area. That's yes. Amazing, yeah. So I look forward to that and take in. And uh, I introduce Levine Bakery to my boyfriend, and he loves it. So I mean, I'm taking in New York. I bought two pair of sneakers already. So I mean, <laughs> I love this. Great, great. And Michael, you have some mixed uh, feelings. No, no. no I'm <laughs> since since. 14, I had my debut, and since that time, I don't know whether I was in New York before, but since then, and my wife too, we are addicted to New York. Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible, and also feeling the development from one year to the next. It's incredible, the changes. It's, uh, and, but now, it's not this much time um, to maybe to feel how it changed. I live in the 56th Street in the Symphony House, which is in midst of all the noise, which was really terrible in the, in the beginning. Mm. We live outside from Berlin, you hear nothing during the night, for example. Mm. And here you, well, if, you, if there is one minute without an alarm or something, <laughs> you think something is wrong. It's the truth. And, um, Covid is back. <laughs> it, but it's, well, I don't know. And I was asked quite often, uh, tell me, tell me, how is New York? But I must ask you, you live here, maybe most of you, and I don't know I, whether... I mean, last night we had only half of the seats. So I think this mm -hmm. is also a sign, like everywhere, that um, people are still not sure mm -hmm. coming back to normal life, if we can, at, at all. But um, maybe it takes time. Let's see. I don't know. Uh, but I, I do not have the impression that there is less activity. Okay, some theatres have been closed, of course, maybe mm. they are reopened the Broadway, uh, but the restaurants are full and the people try to get out and to uh, join each other and to do, but I don't know. Whether That's, that is change. now. Um, oh. At the beginning, when things hit oh. in March, it was like night and day. Everything Terrible was closed. Yeah, and of can't course, you also feel that it's less tourists now? Yeah. I love that, being right. yeah, well, <laughs> one of the few. <laughs> of course. Right. The being rest a tourist and just going... Oh, there's not that much lines. Yeah, the restaurants were closed. Or am I wrong? Closed. Yeah. It is right. And, and, because and, you can go to the museums without booking two weeks in advance. Oh, that's right. Indeed. Right. So that's nice. Well, as you probably <laughs> noticed, all, all of the restaurants now look very European because they have all the outdoor seating, <laughs> you know, and doubling their seating capacity because at a certain point yes, last year, no indoor uh, dining. Of course, of course. Oh, there are changes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, we are just thrilled to have you here, truly, especially after a, a, such 
a wonderful, intense performance last night. It's really very generous of you to give us your time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And Michael, I know you always have a lot to say, so anything that you'd no, like to say in conclusion? I don't conclusion? know whether I have a lot to say, but I speak <laughs> a lot. I don't know. That's maybe a difference. I, I don't know. No, it was, it's wonderful to have a contact also in that way with the audience. And of course, you feel it also during a show. And this is also last night, for example. It was really, wow. If you sit there on the stage, and, uh, for example, in the third act, and you listen, and there was a big applause at the beginning of the third act. And I was so happy that, that uh, yeah, people like it. And this yeah. is our daily bread. And of course. We need it. And that's good. We can't do it without you. Yeah. Huh? No, we can't do it without no. that. No, that's right. It's true. I had a lot of stream, uh, quite a few concert streamings uh, or streamed in an empty concert hall. You too. Right? That was so terrible. Of course so. And uh, I remember very clearly to first of August last last year, my wife organized an open air gala with two wonderful colleagues from Italy, and with a big symphony orchestra in a stadium, in a football, mm. in a soccer stadium. And at that time, in this part of Germany, only 500 seats have been allowed. In, a, in the open air, mm. in a wide range. Mm. Totally nuts, but okay. But not even these 500 seats have been sold. Mm. Two or 300 came. But these 300, in the end, when there was the final curtain, they stood up and cried and shouted, thank mm. you, thank you. Mm. And we started to cry and have been and gave them a big warm hand. And Because this is, this is part of our job, not job, of our... If we don't have you. Mm. I just want to say that after having climbed Mount uh, Everest, which is the role of uh, Hans Sachs, everything else should be easy compared to this. Oh. Thank you oh. so much You're for being welcome. here. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. I, we want to express our appreciation to our wonderful artists. And we do have a tradition over 40 years of these seminars, at the end of the Metcast roundtable, we would give you a bottle, of, a glass of champagne to enjoy whenever you're not singing. <laughs> <laughs> I know singers are very fussy about that, but uh, we'd like you to take this as a gesture of our appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and we thank you all for being here. Thank Victoria. Thank everyone. We look forward to the next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.